This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to look at arithmetic sequences. Specifically, we're going to find the nth term in arithmetic sequences. So in this video, we're going to look at notation, uh, so we can understand how it is we're going to do this. We're going to look at example one and example two. All right, let's get started. So let's start by talking about the notation that we use when we are looking at sequences, and specifically arithmetic. All right, well, uh, let's say that we have a sequence of numbers. All right, sequence of numbers means that there are a bunch of numbers and we're separating them by commas. Okay, so I'm giving you a sequence to start with, where we start with the number 10, then we have 12, then we have 14, then we have 16, and so on. The dot, dot, dot means that this sequence goes on forever. It never ends. All right, well, when in mathematics we talk about these values, we call the first term a1. Okay, that's not a power. That little one is not an exponent. It just means that this is the first number in the sequence. Okay, so likewise, that this is the second number. So we call that a2. This is the third number, a3. We say this is the fourth number. And we go dot, dot, dot. And we sometimes use a term to describe the generic uh, term by using a n. This means, just like this is the first number, we know that this one right here is the second number. This is the third number. This one, of course, would be the fourth number. And this one, we say that it is the nth number. All right, so it is the nth number, and it goes on forever, so this could be represent the 20th term, whatever, some variable expression uh, we use to describe some uh, term within the sequence. All right, uh, there's also something else that's going on here. If you look at uh, these uh, numbers, look at the difference between any two consecutive numbers. So the difference here is two. The difference here is two. And the difference here is two. And you can see that this difference is going to go on forever. It's going to be the same distance between pairs of consecutive values within this sequence. All right, we call that the common difference. All right, it is the common difference because it's the difference that occurs throughout the entire sequence. All right, now I believe we have enough tools so that we can now use this notation to move on and actually figure out how to find the nth term in a specific sequence. All right, let's go on to and talk about a few examples. Let's take a look at an example. So here are some numbers I'm putting down, separating those numbers with commas. This is called a sequence. Now, what we want to do is determine, is this an arithmetic sequence? Well, if it's an arithmetic sequence, the difference between consecutive numbers is always going to be the same. So if I subtract these two, I get three. If I subtract these two consecutive numbers, I get three. And if I subtract these two consecutive numbers, I get three also. All right, so this is definitely an arithmetic sequence because the common difference, the difference between pairs, consecutive pairs, is common. It's the same. It's three. All right, once we know this little fact, uh, it's kind of valuable. It's kind of valuable because we're going to use it to find a large, uh, I should say, a number along the sequence very far down the line. You know, if I wanted to find the fifth term, it'd really be simple. I would add 14 and 3. It would be 17. If I wanted to find the next, the sixth number, I would add 3 again. I just keep on adding 3. Now, the problem with that is that, you know, what if I want to find the 400th term or the 1,007th term? You, you know, that, that process of needing the 8th term before I could find the 9th and 
needing the 105th term before I can get the 106th term, it's kind of long process. So I want to be able to jump right to the 26th term. All right, so what if someone says find the 26th term? All right, well, I'm going to show you how to do that. So there's a really simple formula that you're going to use. You're going to say that the nth term is equal to the common difference times n plus some constant. All right, again, n stands for the term number that you're looking for. In this case, it's going to be 26. So that'll be a, n will be a 26 there. But you've got this pesky, pesky c. How do you get c? You know, I've got the d, right? The common difference is 3, but where does this common difference come, to, come from? Well, we first have to figure out what this is, and then we can figure out the 26th term. All right, well, we know something about the first term. We know the first term, right? The first term is 5. But I'm going to plug in 1 inside this equation. In other words, I'm going to replace the n with 1. So I'm going to replace this n right there with 1. Remember that the common difference we already calculated, that was 3. We just don't know what the c value is. So we know the first term is got to be equal to this. And we know the first term is 5. So I basically plugged in 1. I plugged in the common difference. Going to figure out what the c is. And we know it's got to be equal to the first term. Okay, so let's figure out what c is. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus some number is 5. All right, well, it's pretty easy to see that that's got to be 2. Your c value has got to be 2, right? So in actuality, we now know specifically the equation that kind of holds everything together. So we now know that the c value is 2. Now this formula is actually a function. It's a linear function. It's going to help us figure out any term we're looking for. I want to know what the 26th term is, right? Well, now I can find it. The 26th term is equal to d times n. Remember, n now is 26 plus that constant c. So I'm basically just putting in 26 now into this number n. I'm figuring out what this is. All right, so to find the 26th term, I'm going to multiply 3 times 26. So what is that? 18. That's 78 plus 2. So the 26th number is 80. If I wanted to know the 50th number, I would put 50 in here. I go 3 times 50. That's 150 plus 2. 152. So the 50th term is 152, and so on. I could, I could use this to find whatever term I'm looking for. All right, that's the first time you've seen this, and I think you need to see one more before you really get comfortable with it. So let's do one more example. Let's take a look at another example. So I've got 15, 11, 7, 3, dot, dot, dot. All right, so a second example. So it is a sequence because I'm separating these numbers with commas. And it looks like it's going on forever, so it looks like it's an infinite sequence. Is it arithmetic? Let's test it. So the way you check is you take the difference between consecutive values. So you take 11, subtract 15, is negative 4. 7, take away 11, negative 4. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. In other words, it looks like if I take 15, add negative 4, I get 11. 11 plus negative 4 is 7. So we call that, of course, the common difference. Yep, and since the difference is common, it definitely is an arithmetic sequence. All right, uh, what do we do with this? Well, we know that this is the first term, a1, a2, let's put that down there, a1, a2, a3, 4. Someone may ask us to find the 50th term. Now, again, it wouldn't be hard if I wanted to find the fifth term. I would just take 3, add negative 4, bam, I got the fifth term. 
negative one. So, uh, yeah, but it gets harder when you're asked to find a number that's far along in the sequence. All right, so how do you do it? So there is a little formula you use. You say a of n is equal to the common difference times n plus some constant which we have to find. All right, so again, to use this, let's make use of these numbers. I could use any one of these. I always like to just use the first term. So the first term, which we know is 15. Um, in other words, I'm gonna replace one for the n value. So I'm gonna replace that n with one. Our common difference we already know is negative four. And uh, the c value, we don't know. And all of this is equal to the first term, right? The first term we know is 15. So the first thing we really have to do is figure out what the c value is. And by using the 15, the first term, we could find out what the c value is. All right, so uh, let's multiply it. Negative 4 times 1 plus c. If I add 4 to both sides, I'm going to get 19. All right, so our formula now becomes... Let's see, negative 4 is our D. I know the N, well, stands for whatever number I'm looking for, whatever term number I'm looking for. And we now know what C is. It's 19. All right, so I've got the formula. And now what we're going to you do is use it to find the 50th term. So if I want to find the 50th term, I'm going to replace the N with 50. All right, so let's see. If I multiply those guys, I get negative 200 plus 19. I'm going to get negative 181. There you go. So I know the 50th term is negative 181, and I didn't have to find all of the terms before it to get the 50th term. I was able to zoom right in to the one I'm looking for. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com Check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and our instructional videos. Take care.